Okay, guys, this is Dr. Sean over at Fortis Colleges. We're doing the online version of medical terminology, and this is our book right up here. This is the Mastering Healthcare um, Terminology 6th Edition by Betsy J. Shineland. And I'm going to find my cursor, and we're going to go to Chapter 16. This is Oncology. Kind of interesting, pretty in-depth, uh, actually, for terminology. So we're going to go mostly with the terms not understanding a lot of the stuff because that's pretty in-depth man uh, but there's some really good diagnostic stuff for self-diagnosis and also what to look for in things like skin cells um, cancers and and stuff like that so that's going to be the fun part of it don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more you can look at the playlist which is the anatomy and physiology playlist because i usually teach anatomy and physiology but this is medical terminology and this i think is week three part uh, the whole the whole class, this is part one, two, three, four, five. This is part six, I believe. Or five or six, something like that. Right, I'll put it in the description. Anyway, 16.1, physiology of neoplasms. Neoplasms, new growth is what that means. Recognize, use terms related to physiology. So all we have to do is recognize the terms. Be able to kind of see what they are. Recognize them, go like, oh, okay, that's what that is. Now, it can get pretty detailed in there. Cancer specialty and specialists. So cancers usually show up as either a tumor, which is a growth, right? Um, and then there's there'd like be OMA, something OMA, or neoplasms, which is new growth, or carcinomas, which are cancerous growth. So you have an oncologist is the is the studier of oncology. And then you have a registrar. Let's see, they have a specialist as a cancer registrar. And what that has to do with is people who um, they're either doing research on cancer and uh, trying to find out how to get rid of it, right? Causes of cancer, there's many environmental things that you can do, pathogens and genetics, mostly environmental. So if it's environmental, it can be from the chemicals that we ingest, that we take in, that we put on our skin. Like recently, you just found that like these hand sanitizers have a crazy amount of carcinogens in them. So they're going to try to do something about that. Now, other things that can cause cancer is chronic irritation of an area. So that would be like pathogens, okay? You could say a pathogen would be like cigarette smoke is a pathogen kind of like generate a pathology in the lungs. Okay, the smoke is not good for you. The tar is not good for you, those kind of things. There are genetic predispositions. Um, however, uh, some of those, and you know, I mean, like one of the things people say all the time is like genetics, oh, my parents had it, so I'll have it. Depends on how you live your life too. So let's say your parents were heavy smokers the whole life, and then they stopped before you were like, like you, were, you weren't around them, so you weren't a secondhand smoker, right? Well, I was. My parents smoked, so they were. They both died of lung-related issues, probably related to smoking. So I have a chance to, but probably, hopefully not, because I don't smoke. Breathe smoggy air, though. Uh, normal, normal cell versus oncogenesis. Oncogenesis. Oncogenesis would be fingernail growth. So this is oncogenesis, which is cancer growth. Normal cell division occurs. Remember we went over that. That's the interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase process of it. And the end of it is apoptosis. Okay, so remember like um, that whole thing, normal cell mitosis, okay? Cancer caused by active uh, oncogenes. So you can have genes that will activate for cancers. Cancer is caused by action of mutated tumor suppressor genes. So sometimes when your genes are, are, are working, remember genes are just like recipes to make new parts. And if that, that somehow doesn't get copied properly, it can end up with the wrong kind of thing that you make, and that could be considered cancerous. Okay. Apoptosis has to do with cell death. Okay, apoptosis is the actual term, but I like to say apoptosis because it reminds me that the cells go, right? So it's apoptosis, okay? Hyperplasia. So hyperplasia leading to cancer. Hyperplasia is, is growth. So you can have hyperplasia, let's say normal hyperplasia. You start working with rocks and you're, you're, you're holding rocks all the time. You get calluses. That's hyperplasia, okay? Uh, you start working with... Um, uh, you're carrying heavy rocks, your bones start growing, your muscles start growing. That's hyperplasia. That's normal. But then you have dysplasia, okay? Uncontrolled or a bad growth, okay? Cancer in C2 is severe. In C2 means like in one spot, like it's really going. And then you have invasive, which is called metastatic. Here it is here. Metastasis or metastatic cancer cells from primary tumor cells invade surrounding tissues and vessels. It can also go to the lymph system, which we talked about, right? That's a really slow loop moving. So it can kind of like creep along there and then settle in places where it can like set up shop and no one really checks on it. Cancer cells travel through the bloodstream to distant organs. Yes. Cancer cells reinvade and grow at new locations. That's a very weird thing. So it's, it's really, it's a, it's kind of like a, 
um, think of the cells as like workers that just have no job. They have nothing to do, but they're getting a paycheck and they're living off the what everybody else does. And they don't really have a, a thing that they're supposed to do, like a lung cell. So they just work, do their own thing, whatever. And that's not good because then they, they slowly they grow easily and they they work, they, they run out the good guys. Okay. We have carcinomas, sarcomas. Sarco, sarco has to do usually with muscle or connective tissue. Um, lymphoma, of course, from the lymph system. Leukemia, the decrease in white blood cells. Myeloma, blood, that's uh, uh, remember myelo that had to do with uh, uh, bone marrow, right? And then mixed cell tumors, you know, all kinds of stuff. Now you can even have what's called teratoma. A teratoma is actually uh, like it's, it's a terror, right? It's, it's it's a tumor that has all the different pieces to it. So it has hair tissue and eye tissue and liver tissue, and bone tissue. So it's like a little mini me that's growing inside you somehow. There's a lot of weird cases of that. Malignant versus uh, benign. Benign usually means it's not going to hurt you. Okay, malignant is going to hurt you. Growth of okay, the mode of growth, like how is it growing? Uh, how the cells look under microscopic examination, if they're spreading, other properties, I'm not sure what those are yet, but we'll find out. Recurrence, do they keep coming back and do they cause problems? So they may not cause any problems, it could be totally benign. Staging and grading, so we have different grading and staging differentiation of anaplasia or plasio. That's going to be the grade, and then the stage is it, it versus clinical versus patho pathologic. So um, T and M, I'd have to look that up. I think it's tuberculosis management. I can't remember. I have to look it up. Recognize to use a term related to neoplasm. Okay, signs and symptoms of neoplasm cancer: anorexia. You don't want to eat. Bruising. You eat bruise easily. Leukocytosis. Problems with your white blood cells. Fatigue. You're tired all the time. Cachexia. Let's look up cachexia real quick. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Cachexia. Cachexia. Muscle wasting. I can't believe I forgot that, but I did. Muscle wasting. Thrombocytopenia. You have low um, uh, uh, thrombocytes, and that leads to bruising anyway. Muscular skeletal neoplasms, you can have benign muscular skeletal, here's skeletal, osteoma, chondroma, this is cartilage, and rhabdomyoma, those are, and leomyomas, these are for muscle. These are pretty rare, actually. Osteomas are more common than chondromas, and chondromas are more, more common than, than rhabdomyomas. Malignant ones is osteosarcoma, uh, happens with the bone, chondro with the cartilage, rhabdomyosarcoma, those are bad, and Ewing sarcoma, this is a very common one you see. Ewing sarcoma is probably the most common we see. Uh, integumentary, so the skin, okay? So dermatofibroma, dermatofibroma, or malignant one, basal cell carcinoma. We see this one, squamous cell. Squamous remembers flat cells. Malignant melanoma. Uh, melanin, and these are the, the cells that make the melanin. So they just go crazy and make a big dark spot. Okay, and the Kaposi's, Kaposi's sarcoma. This usually happens with... Um, uh, people with acquired immune deficiency syndromes. Okay, remember it doesn't have to do with AIDS all the time. It can be from cancers. It can be from chemotherapies. It can be from other issues like maybe uh, radiation therapy, but also AIDS, uh, uh, HIV actually. Uh, gastrointestinal neoplasms, leomyoma, the muscle of the of the gut somewhere. Polyps can turn into uh, uh, and gastric adenomas. So th these can actually turn into th these are all precancerous, but they're benign. Mm -hmm. Uh, adrenal carcinoma of the esophagus, the stomach, pancreas, colon, or rectum. Okay, so adeno, adeno means gland. So one of the glands becomes carcinogens. They, they work a lot, and if they have a lot of irritation, they're not able to clean themselves out very well, that's what will happen. Urinary neoplasms, benign nephroma, so part of the kidney, the nephron. Hypernephromal renal cell carcinoma, Wilms tumor, neo, nephroblastoma, transitional cell carcinoma of the bladder. Ooh. Male reproductive neoplasms. All right, we're cruising right along here. Benign, so benign, prostatic hyperplasia. Hyperplasia means it grows, okay? It's getting swollen. Uh, prostatic is the prostate. That's a gland only in males. And what happens is, is the, all your glands have to secrete their secretions. If they don't secrete their secretions and they don't get cleaned out, they can become irritated and that can lead to this kind of stuff. 
Now, there's also hormonal issues that are involved with this as well. So, adenocarcinoma of the prostate, seminoma, or teratoma. There's another teratoma. We see other stuff in there. Female reproductive, fibrocystic changes in the breast. Very common. Happens with the cycle. The people are like, oh man, I have a little lump here, and then it goes away, and it comes back, goes away. That's a fibrocystic change, right? Those are benign. Fibroids, you can usually get those in the, um, the around the uterus too. Okay, ovarian cysts. Those happen every single month as well in many people, but some people don't even notice it. A cyst is just a fluid-filled pack, and then it it either gets reabsorbed or it pops. Okay, and cervical dysplasia. So the cervix. We're talking cervix, not cervical, not neck. Talking the neck of the uterus down inside. The cervical dysplasia, we have uh, uh, unusual cellular uh, activity, for example. Now, that can happen for a lot of different reasons. It can become STDs, and it can be because of, of uh, uh, different uh, uh, tampon use and stuff like that. So that can happen pretty easily. Okay, but malignant, okay, the bad ones. Infiltrating ductal adeno, adreno, adenocarcinoma of the breast infiltrating from the duct of the breast so where the, the nipple is inside there stromal endometrial carcinoma epithelial ovarian that's in the ovaries and the endometrium is the uh, uterus squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix that's again the cervix okay that's this the squamous cell the, the covering cells now blood lymphatic and immune system and neoplasms we have thymomas it happens in the the thymus not very common Malignant leukemia, Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's, and malignant thymoma. Okay. Hemangiomas, atrial myxoma. Is it cardiovascular ones? It's unusual, I think, for these. Uh, mangiosarcoma, cardiac myxosarcoma. Yeah, rare in those kind of things, but they do happen, right? Respiratory, papilloma. That's here. Papilloma. Okay, papilla. Uh, bronchia bronchiogenic carcinoma in the lung, adenocarcinoma of the lung, small cell, non-small cell, and mesothelioma. Mesothelioma happens because of um, uh, asbestos. Uh, asbestos was a fire retardant used in the shipping industry a lot, and people who worked in it didn't wear masks, and or maybe they wore masks, and they would just get exposed to this little tiny, like, fiberglassy kind of stuff. It would get in the lungs, and it couldn't be got rid of, so it would cause irritation and, and and eventually cancer, okay, mesothelioma. You don't see it as much anymore, but it was very common a few years ago because way, way, way before that, people were using a lot of the asbestos in the buildings, okay? And if there is asbestos, they have to do a whole mitigation process to get it out of there. Benign nervous system, meningiomas, neuromas, and neurofibromas. So you can have different ones in here. Meduloblastoma, that's in the brain here, and glioblastoma multiform is also in brain cancers. Um, endocrine, theochromocytoma, and benign to pituitary tumors. So pituitary, remember, it's up in the brain, but it's the, the, the endocrine part of the brain, right? Malignant is thyroid carcinoma. Thyroid's in here. Uh, eye and ear neoplasms, acoustic neuroma. Choroidal hemangioma, that's in the eye. Okay, retinoblastoma is malignant. That says you get basic eye cancer, Okay. Age matters. Okay, pediatrics, you get these little ones here, ALL, retinoblastoma, UV sarcoma, lung prostate, all the other stuff I guess old people get. Diagnostic procedures, therapeutic interventions. Let's look at these. Recognize and use the terms. Okay, so terms related to diagnostic procedures. They're going to look at your history, the patient history. Have they had cancer before? Have their parents had ca cancer? Have uh, they been exposed to certain chemicals? Have they had certain activities happen to them or whatever? This is all kinds of things. Whether they've had kids, whether they haven't had kids, all these kind of things. Smoking history. Have you smoked? Do you not smoke? How many packs a day, etc. Tumor markers. That's a blood test. Biopsies. They find something. They go like, let's take a piece of it, send it to the lab. So I had a patient who had a, a what's called a lipoma, which is a fatty tumor on her rump. And she had it done. And she's like, oh, my God, I have a weird butt, butt cancer or something like that. So she's freaking out. So they went and they did a, a um, uh, uh, biopsy. And they used, like, some kind of apple core on her because they put a hole about the size of, like, that big around. <clears throat> dig in there and pull that chunk out and send it to the lab. And they said, oh, it's fine. Then she had stitches and had a scar there forever. Which, I mean, at least you know what it's not, right? 
Imaging, you can do like uh, x-rays for some, you can do MRIs for some, you can CT scans as a self-detection. It has to do with like paying attention to yourself, right? So tumor markers, these are all the stuff that we can see in the um, blood test. CA-125, I have experience with that one. Um, these are very specific markers that you can have tests for. So you can go and have the test for these and they'll be different depending on what's going on in your body. CA-125 is, is, is one for like, I think ovarian cancer and some other ones like that. That's a, a really good one. Uh, human chorion, chorion uh, gonadotropins. This is a gonadotropin. It's here, NSC, I can't remember. PSA is prostatic, prostate um, antigen. I can't remember, T90. These are all different markers. You can do d different blood tests through here. You can look them up. You can write up on them if you want to. But I would do, go ahead, look them up real quick, write them down. Real quick, one sentence after them. That way you'll know what it is, okay? You'll have it in your notes in case you're on the test. Terms related to CT is commuted, computed tomography, magnetic and resonance imaging, nuclear scans, PET scans, monoclonal antibodies, blah, blah, blah. See, we've seen that one too. Monoclonal antibodies we see a lot lately. Depends on the antibodies that are for different things that your body's fighting. And it could they could show up with what's going on in cancer, right? radiology, mammograms, stereotech, so they even do 3D ones now, which is pretty cool. So self-detection, here we are. So CAUTION, C-A-U-T-I-O-N is the acronym, right? Remember that they have a little like uh, acronyms for things. And so this is a, a uh, eponym as well, right? It's change in bowel habits, C, change in bowel habits. So what that means is you're going more, you're going less significantly, or we have a difference in in what it looks like, okay, is, is like one of the things I used to talk about a lot is the caliber, the size of your poops are different. They're much more small now, or they're much more stringy than they were before. Uh, blood in your stool, blood in your urine, uh, dark urine, uh, stuff like that, okay, that doesn't go away. A sore that does not heal, A. Now that's a dumb one. A sore that does not, A, could be A, anything, right? A sore that does not heal. So you have a canker sore or some kind of sore, and it just won't heal after a long time. That could be a cancer uh, similar. Because it's, it's said that, like, ulcers usually don't become cancerous, but all cancers become ulcerous, okay? Unusual bleeding or discharge. So unusual as opposed to the usual bleeding. Let's say you're bleeding out of uh, a nipple. That's unusual, right? You're bleeding out of your uh, bowel. That's unusual. You shouldn't be bleeding there, okay? Uh, or some kind of sore you're bleeding out of. That's not right. Thickening of the lump of the breast, testicle, or elsewhere. Uh, thickening of, of whatever tissue. That can be the lipomas too, but you got to get it checked out. Indigestion or difficulty swallowing. Now, progressive and doesn't get better. And difficulty swallowing, it could be like, does it happen all the time or only with certain foods? That's that's a difference. That's, a, that's, that's how you diagnose things. You split things up, right? Obvious change in the size, shape, color, thickness of a wart, mole, or mouth sore. Any sore, okay? And we'll talk about the different sizes of things in a minute, too. Nagging, cough, or hoarseness. Um, that could be, of course, laryngeal in through here, okay? Uh, there's a lot of different places that could happen. But yeah, horse, chest, neck kind of thing. Terms of self skin cancer, we use the ABCD rule. We used to do... Um, uh, a, B, and C only, I think. So we have asymmetry. So any like mole that is unusually shaped. Symmetrical means they're like the same size, right? That's on each side. It's symmetrical. You cut it in half. You know, oh, okay, there's, you can find a half to it. But if it's like a weird shape or something like that, that's not a good sign. B for border. Is it a smooth border or a rough border? Okay, a rough border is not as good. Color. Does it have a color? Is it similar like color all the way through? Or is it kind of change? Is it like kind of weird looking? Diameter. How big? Is it bigger than this or, you know, whatever? That's that's also a, an indicator of possible uh, skin cancer. And elevation, if it's elevated off the skin. They have other things you can have too, but uh, those are good Those are good things to go have checked. Okay, by who? A dermatologist. Lumpectomy, take out the lump. Simple mastectomy, take out one breast. End block resection, they take out the insides of it. Radical mastectomy, they take out both, plus all the lymphs, lymph nodes, lymph nodes dissection, lymph node mapping, they kind of follow the lymph nodes and take out the ones they need to. And the central lymph nodes are the ones that they, uh, uh, are the ones that are supposed to protect the other ones, okay? And then we have the margins of the, marginal, margins of the surgery. Terms related to radiography, radiation, ra brachiotherapy, that's, that has to do with arms. Three-dimensional 
conformal radiation therapy. Gamma knife surgery. I heard a lot about this. is pretty pretty specific, pretty interesting, man. They get in there with a gamma knife and cut these little tiny tubers out, and you don't even know they're there. Okay, chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, they're using therapy to chemicals that cause cells to not grow. Okay, and we're hoping that, you, that, that, that the cancer dies before you do, basically. So they're rough. They're tough, tough chemicals. Immunotherapy, now they're getting so specific that they can find a specific immune uh parts so that they can teach your body to go after the cancer they could pull out some of your white blood cells basically chemically treat them and then put them back in your body after they've killed off all of your other white blood cells they just start from a new slate put in these new guys who are like basically taught as commandos and they go and they get rid of the cancer i've seen that on a couple of patients bone marrow transplant you take out the old bone marrow and put in new marrow, bone marrow complementary and alternative medicine techniques so, wow, it's interesting that they even put that in there. So you can use like um, certain herbal things too, of course, and you can use acupuncture and uh, meditation techniques will help with those kind of things because they help to relax you. And that's important in the healing process, right? And that's that shouldn't be underestimated because 80% of disease processes are uh, 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 made worse or started by the stress events. Vaccines, okay, to present, prevent. They have, they do have va vaccines for like uh, different kinds of cancers now. Uh, they're working on like human papillomavirus cancers and stuff like that, cervical cancers, and they give them to kids. I don't know how good that is. Um, I don't know. Pharmacology, alkylating agents, neat, okay. One of the things that the cancer does is make your body too acidic, so we want to make it more alkaline. And we can do that with nutrition, okay. And we can do that with uh, certain alkylating agents. Okay, there's different things we can do to the body. Anti-metabolites. So we get we 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 give your body stuff that doesn't allow the cells to absorb the the, the nutrients that it needs, and we keep the nutrients for ourselves. Anti-neoplastic antibiotics. So again, this is immune therapy and those uh, anti-neoplastic hormones. Again, kind of a cool uh, thing they can do to, to manipulate the hormones that you already make. Interleukins. Uh, have to do with your body's ability to hunt down and find cells that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And then mitotic inhibitors keeps them from growing. And then uh, the vinca alkaloids, we're again talking about alkali alkalizing the system. So uh, that was a good quick one, 22 minutes here, guys. So this again was oncology chapter, ah, chapter 16. And that's the cat talking too. He wants to see what's going on. Oh, come here, come here, pig boy. Come here. Okay, come on. Come on, you can say hi to people. There you go. This is Baby Cakes, and he likes to... Oh, okay, so he just wants to hug. And I guess that means we're done. So I got to go do some stuff with him. Okay, talk to you guys later. You guys take care. Do your do your work. He's smelling my mustache and stuff. So do your, do your stuff. Have fun with it. Look up some of those things if you don't understand them. Um, get it in your head. Take some good notes. It's good stuff to learn anyway. And you can, you can talk to people about, you know, like doing self-care and look at the caution. Uh, 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 do, do the caution that, that one we had. Where was that? Just look back here real quick. He likes to see the, uh, mouse on the thing whoops we did a lot guys where is it there it is caution so remember this one here self related self-detection c-a-u-t-i-o-n you can look that up that's on slide 33 or you can look up uh the cancer skin cancer one on 34 anyway you guys take care of yourselves we'll talk to you later i'm gonna load these up and then we'll go from there so this is again is week three part three of week three but it's also part, I think, six. I'll figure it out. Well, you guys take care. Talk to you later. Bye.